Yes, thank you. Thank you, Susanna. And good afternoon to, to everybody. Uh, I think that the, uh, that the main problem for me would be to stick with time, but I will, I will do my best. <laughs> Just to give you uh, an overview of what is going on in, in Croatia with the implementation of the Argos Convention. And I have to say that while I was preparing myself for, for this presentation, I was thinking because I'm working uh, as an environmental lawyer now for almost 16 years. And for many years we could see, and I think that we also shared in this kind of events, um, some kind of uh, progress. And we were always seeking uh, for more and wanted to see more progress in all three pillars. Uh, but now I'm thinking that we are all talking uh, about, about not seeing uh, almost any progress, but the deg degradation of uh, all of, uh, implementation of all the three pillars. And unfortunately, this is also the case in Croatia. So sometimes I'm, um, I'm sorry that uh, we are still not uh, five years ago. I think that we have uh, completely different uh, problems. I will give you an uh, overview of the uh, situation in, uh, in Croatia about uh, all three pillars. And for access to information, I can say that we do see, see still some progress because more environmental institutions um, are putting information uh, online. Uh, there is more um documents in which you can participate basically anybody can give uh, any any comments which i will say more uh, uh, when talking about public participation but i i can say that we can see that um, uh, everything is available almost everything is available online but now this is being used as a just the only way in which you can participate, which is really strange in the country with uh, not internet connection available everywhere. So I think that people who are living in specific area where some, some really large project is planned, they probably still get the information what is going on uh, basically at the end when, uh, when it's being already constructed. So I think that although online uh, tool is always great, as this is also for this event, but I think it's, uh, it cannot be used as the, only, uh, as the only tool for public participation. Uh, the main problem which stays now for really a long, long time is that we have this really old uh, regulation on uh, access to information and public participation in environmental matters because we have a new environmental protection law which is constantly being changed so the last one is uh, from 2013 and which changes even in 2017 and 18 but a regulation is still the old one from 2008 and there is no sign that it will be changed in any time and it's not in line uh, with the environmental protection act especially uh, regarding time, timing, which is allowed for uh, public participation. This is just, uh, we, are, uh, we are saying it and other NGOs are saying it constantly to the ministry, but there is just, um, yeah, they, they just don't, don't have any intention to, to change it for now. Also, what we see, especially in the last uh, two years, the, the, there is uh, some strange new formalities, which are not, um, determined in, in any legislation when you are requesting uh, information as a representative of, uh, of an NGO. Uh, now it's not enough that you are employed as a, as a, in, in some NGO or that you are activist, which was normal before that you are seeking information as just being activists in some NGO, but uh, all these requests for information has to be uh, signed by a um, uh, person who is a legal legal representative of NGO, which we find really strange. Of course, you are always lacking time, and um, you do at the end send a request how they how these institutions are asking it. But we think that this is uh, some really strange uh, new restriction. 
and we don't see the point. Then about uh, public participation, we have this, uh, I would say, really great and, and progressive uh, system, which is called in Croatian ESA Lithuania, but in, in English it would be like e-consultation. So all, uh, not only environmental, but uh, the other legislation is available there. You can, anybody can uh, register and uh, leave the comment. You can see what others commented. And I just found out that uh, uh, apparently 95 or a bit more than 95 percent of legislation was available to public uh, through this portal, which is really great. But we have to ask ourselves uh, when you check uh, these comments and when you see replies from different ministries, especially from the ministry who is in charge for uh, environment, uh, there is a big question, is it real participation or you just gave information because a lot, a uh, great majority actually of the comments is not accepted. I, I always want to give something positive. So we do have one um, example of go, uh, good practice from the, uh, from the two years ago. Uh, so one county in Croatia organized, um, there was a, SEA for a, a spatial plan available and uh, public and also NGOs were uh, invited to participate in a really good manner. It was not, they were not unfortunately invited by the county, uh, but experts uh, who, were, who were developing the SEA study, they contacted uh, NGOs at the end, at the end uh, almost all comments were accepted. So uh, at the end, um, uh, nine small hydropower plants were not allowed to be constructed uh, in this area, which I think is really good success. About access to justice, I think that this is uh, basically the worst pillar as, as, uh, as everywhere else. But um, as I said, I'm, I'm really for a long time in this field and we could see some progress, progress during the years. But for the last two years, it's a completely uh, different situation. So we do have more cases, which is, I think it's a, it's a good thing, not only from NGOs, but also from some local communities. And I think uh, this, I hope that this will continue. But on the other hand, it's more expensive than, than before, because uh, when uh, law on um, administrative, uh, uh, administrative court procedures were, was changed uh, in 2016 and 2017, these costs uh, are much higher because if you lose, you have to cover everything by yourself. And before that, it was that each uh, party had to cover their cost. And there was, uh, if in environmental cases, if the uh, if you you are of course going against the, some administrative body, so they cannot hire uh, the lawyer, but investor who is almost uh, every time also involved in the process they can hire lawyers so at the end you can have a uh, really um, big costs uh, of the procedure and we are it's it's continuously we are losing much more than we are succeeding and this i think that until 2010 it was really not like that we also had some examples of really good uh, practice we have like we can see that uh, courts are uh, coming to conclusion or their decision much faster, but you can see some really strange decisions. Uh, for example, it happened at one uh, really big uh, case that um, the judge uh, asked us to just uh, after the hearing just to go outside and she made a decision in 15 minutes while we were waiting outside without any expert witnesses allowed uh, without any basically procedure just uh, uh, she, she, they are just deciding uh, like before uh, just basically on your claim and the documents which are submitted submitted by the other side uh, and one last remark here uh, we are now testing some decisions which are uh, made uh, by the government about some strategic cases and we are asking ourselves is it even possible to go against the decision because during some court decision government um, decides to issue a law uh, on this specific uh, uh, investment in place so it's really 
how to expect from the court that it will go uh, against that. We think that um, uh, this, this slide is actually the, the, also the last one. Uh, I just wanted to present you some, um, how is the situation in the, in the civil society in general in Croatia, not only environmental NGOs. For example, we do, didn't uh, have any, uh, we didn't prepare a shadow report and I think it's a lack, uh, it, it was because of the lack of funds for things like that and basically for any advocacy work because for the, since 2016, uh, we can see that there are uh, funds which are available are basically for some educational activities, which is fine. Of course, the NGOs had to do that. But it seems that the um, government thinks that we are good for educating public, for educating students, uh, but we are not good enough to be their partner in, um, in implementation of uh, environmental or any other politics. So it's, uh, you know, you, we should stick uh, to, to this, all these educational activities and uh, just not to have enough uh, time uh, for anything else, especially not for any uh, advocacy activities. Uh, regarding fifth uh, implementation report on Argus Convention, yeah, it was also on e-consultation uh, available for, for one month and um, one can easily see that uh, all comments which were submitted by NGOs or by, by anybody uh, were declined or there is one new expression now, which, which is being frequently used by, um, by the ministry. Uh, it is that they are taking, that they are considered as some noted about what you write. So it's even worse than before. It's not that they decline something that you comment or suggest, uh, or that they accept it, they just um, uh, take that as a note, which we still don't know what does it mean. Uh, so, uh, uh, about um, some institutional changes, uh, which I think is also very important to mention. So until 2019, uh, Croatia has had this Agency for Environment and Nature, which was a separate body from the ministry. Uh, and sometimes they had like really opposite or different opinions than the ministry. But from 2019, they, were, they became part of the Ministry of Environment. Uh, and the last year, it, uh, I think that um, our government showed how, what they think about uh, environmental protection when we lost the uh, Ministry of Environment and, uh, and Energy, and it became part of really large uh, uh, ministry, which is called Ministry of Economy and Sustainable Development. Uh, it's, uh, it has been shown in this one year that it's not, uh, the, it was not the best decision because in environment is always on the last place when they want to push some uh, big investment on, or plan or, or anything else. And the last remark about slap cases, uh, which I think should be, uh, should be uh, mentioned today, uh, not only that there, is, there are more uh, cases against activists, activists and NGOs, but uh, we, for example, had uh, local elections, uh, local elections this year, and one candidate uh, for uh, city, for mayor of uh, city of Zagreb, he had his own uh, com the whole campaign uh, based on uh, uh, talking uh, against uh, civil society and especially about my uh, against my organization, Zelenaxia, because one of the candidates for the mayor of Zagreb was also. Um, president of Zelenaxia, but uh, many, many years ago, but uh, uh, it, was very, uh, it was used to, uh, to tell how we are not using our money properly, uh, but in the other way, how we are spending a lot of, uh, a lot of EU money and so on. So it was really strange to see how one uh, political candidate uh, is, um, is having this the whole his campaign uh, based on talking against uh, civil society in Croatia in, in general. I would stop here because I think my time is up. <laughs>